The perfect relationship is dealing with problem after problem after problem. That's happiness. Yeah. It sounds sounds really, oh, we've got problems. Yeah, but we're going forward. So each one of those problems is the key to our next to the next growth development in our, in our life. If you have a look at anybody who's never been successful, nobody but no one else who is successful has done it themselves. They've all done it with a partner of some sort. They've all had help. And every one of them, and the, it's the relationships that take people through, whether it be marriage relationships, business relationships, or friendships, or whatever. If you're not fighting and dealing with things, you're, going, you're actually going nowhere. Because, because it's it's not possible for a relationship to be together and there to be no difficulties. We believe every Australian deserves a right to own, at the very least, five investment properties. I'm Adrian Trimboli. And I'm Frank Ambezzi. And welcome to the Invest In You podcast. So today I want to bring on a different guest, not property related. He's a psychologist. His name's Robert Hillier. Okay. I've had the pleasure to work with Robert. And so I've had tremendous amount of success and I used him for my own personal relationship. And so I wanted to bring him on because he's got a very different, unique approach when it comes to psychology. He works not just on strategies, but on the spiritual side of things as well, where I guess in today's day and age, we look at things logically. And so he wants to peel it back and go back down to spiritual. So more in, in working on your intuition. Okay. Cause that's what love is about. Love and relationships, regardless if it's a professional relationship in your workforce or if it's your own personal relationship at home. So please listen in. And if you do find this valuable, please like this podcast or share this podcast. And I guarantee you're going to get some value from this. It's very different, very unique. And I wanted to bring this on because this is investing in you. A podcast, is, we're not just talking about property and how to make money through you know, investing in property. We want to make sure we can help people in every area of their life. And I think relationships is where it all starts, okay? Without a, a functioning relationship, of course, regardless of how much money you will have, you will never be successful. And so success, in my eyes, is being successful in every area of your life, okay, and having an impact on the world as well. So listen in, and I guarantee you're going to enjoy the podcast. So Robert, when was the breaking point where you just had enough and you wanted to change your life because you just felt like you were running in circles? That's a good question because... Yeah, I was running in circles. I was going round and round and round, and I was getting nowhere fast. And I'm pretty sure that we've all had all had that experience. But the one thing you had to, I had to found had to do is I had to do something different. And uh, but to say when I did that, I'll go back to the last time I did it because at one stage I was seeing up to fifty people a week, and I was writing reports, and I had a young baby. Um, well, my wife had a young baby and she was home with a young baby and, and I, I, I couldn't work out. I couldn't work out what, she, what, what her problem was just because I was away 60 or 70 hours a week and she was home looking after this young baby. I'd come home, have a bit of a feed, give her a kiss and put her to bed and oh, I thought, what's going on? You know, and quite simply, frankly, this is, what my, this is what my father did anyway. You know, and I thought, oh, what's the problem here? What's the problem? Anyway, um, I decided I better do something about this, so I I uh, I decided to listen to, her. and this would have been about um, would have been about twenty years ago now. I decided to sit there and I decided to listen, and then you know what I found when I started listening, it was terrifying. It was just terrifying. She was going to say stuff I didn't want to hear, and she was going to say stuff about intimacy and how she wanted to be home and how she wanted to talk to me and how she wanted to be to help with the child. And I didn't want to hear that because that was not that was not part of what I what I'd ever done. Mind you, I wasn't happy at the time. That's why I listened. Anyway, um, I thought I'd better give this a go. So I over the years I I listened and listened and listened more to what Annie was saying. Um, our relationship got better and better and better. And I started to see less and less people and things started to go a lot better for me. And the reason I started going a lot, lot better because I was not only just listening to Annie and listening to all the people, around, well, I was always listening to my clients, but I was listening to moi, to me, and I was hearing what I was saying. And I 
And I realized I'd been really abusing myself. I'd been doing everything I could to um, to avoid being in constant touch with me. I was, I, was do, I was just not doing it at all properly. And once I started to get in touch with me and start to look after myself, then I found myself looking after or treating my wife the same way. But until then, I, I, I will say, and I see this quite often, people always... They very often treat their their um, uh, their partner the same way as they treat themselves. So a lot of you know, if, if you feel you're abusing your partner, you're probably abusing yourself too. I don't believe you can ever do anything to your partner without doing it to yourself. However, that's a that's another story which we might get in might get into later. But um, and so ever since then, I've found the key to everything. It's not the only key, by the way, but I've found the key to everything is to listen. But you've got to listen. And this is going to sound weird. You've got to listen to the spirit that's within you. Because that spirit, because when I started listening, I was starting to do things and it, it never made any logical sense, but it worked. It just worked. You know, and as I said, I was working 50 or, 50 or 60 hours a week so, and seeing a heap of people. Then I just stopped and I, I was seeing less clients. Somehow I had more money. Now, that doesn't figure. That just doesn't figure at all. But that's what happened because I was just listening to myself and I was being true to who I was, uh, and that's really all. That's what that's what people come for, come to see me for, and a lot, a lot of people come because they just want to really be true to who they are, not to who their partner wants them to be. Their partner usually wants them to be the best they can be. That's fine, but if you can be true to who you are, people just accept you. But if you're not being true to who you are, then they don't seem to accept you. And guess what? You don't either. You know. Does that um, does that make sense? Yeah, there's a few things. I was just taking notes. Then I guess if you wind it back from I guess when you're younger, growing up, like what was the I guess the relationship your parents had, and do you think there was anything that carried over with you internally as maybe something you held on to or trauma or something that made you go down that path and, and maybe have those traits of what you had, and then you realized, okay, Annie said. Well, you know, you started to listen and you started to change these things. Was that just something that you saw what your parents did and then you kind of followed? Or was that something you just, you think your makeup just picked up these old bad habits maybe from whatever you, however you learned them and then carried them through? What, what do you think, or when you look back, what do you see happen there? Um, it, it's with, up, up until that point, it was all to do with the with the family I grew up in, and you know, they're all they're all like most people. But my, both my parents they've um, they've died now because I'm an, I'm an orphan. However, um, but yeah, they they never listened to each other at all. Not in not in a way that that's effective. They stayed together. They had five kids. They had a farm, and um, and the listening just never never went on. And I guess. When I started listening to Annie, I realised that I'd never ever connected with anybody up until then, because Annie got me to connect with her, and I was not wanting to connect because I, in my family, nobody seemed to connect with anybody, and that's that's from my point of view, and I certainly didn't connect with anybody there at all, and I think I was a bit different anyway, but um, but I was actually acting with Annie in the same way as I've seen my father and mother do. And the thing was that, you know, Annie was, you know, she, she was up to it, but she wasn't going to accept that. And I was shocked because I thought that's the way, that's the way it had to be. Because, you know, oh, this we're talking about 30 or 40 years ago now. I just thought, well, that's the way it's got to be. It's, that's, that's it. That's, that's what my father did. That's, you know, I'm just, I'm just being like that. I'm being no different. And I don't know if I can be any different. Um, you know, but when I say he didn't listen, because if I, if I want to go back even further, you know, I I am a failed farmer because I was supposed to be on the farm. I was the oldest son. Son, all this will be yours. Take over the farm. And I failed and become a psychologist. My God. But uh, but I can remember, and this, is where I, this was my first really significant experience of being in touch with the spirit of myself. And I've told this story often. That I was away one day and I was at really about 1920. I was riding my horse, had the dog there. The horse was fresh, cattle were good, nice sunny day, and green grass, and it was as good as it ever gets in the farm. And I was really enjoying just riding the horse and going along and, 
And I sat there and thought, wow, it doesn't get better than this. And this feeling come, you've got to go. I can't stay here. Now, that made no sense because, son, one day all this will be yours. I had no education, but I just couldn't stay there. You know, you get this feeling in your stomach. You just can't, can't do it. And then when I left, and about three or four weeks later, I found myself in a, um, in a factory putting plastic on plastic, on plastic coat hangers, putting you know, plastic on the, on the metal coat hangers. And I was sitting there and I think, oh, gee, I feel good. And I thought, what the heck? This is the worst job you could possibly have. But I realised what I'd done is I'd now got free and I was being who I needed to be, not who someone else I needed to be. And uh, the farm never, ever would have worked for me. Not ever. I liked it. I was good. I was good at it. But I, it was not what I was supposed to. I don't know why the farm wasn't good. All I know is that there's something within me that spiritually said, go this way. And that spirit, that spiritual part that I was feeling in there, defied all the logic in the world. It did not make logical sense. During that time, but Robert, when you were doing the, you know, the coat hangers, you know, working at that yep. factory, do you think at that time that was something to put a Band-Aid on or, or maybe you were running away from something at that point maybe you didn't realise? Is that something that later on you started to realise that was that was a, a mechanism to run away and find something else to kind of get rid of that feeling? Um, well, I, ha- I, yeah, I was. Look, there's two sorts of, two, two runs away. You can be either running away or you can be doing a flight to health. That to me was a flight to health. I, and I, I had to do that because I, I had to get money. You know, I was, I was there. I was unemployed, I was unemployed at the time. I had no money at all. And so, you know, I just decided to walk, walk down a street of factories and the third factory went into it. I said, yeah, have, here's a job. Here it is. So I walked in and did it. Um, but that was just a respite. There's no way in the world I can stay there for forever. And I, and I, I stayed there for three months, which is, you know, what, what people used to do if, if was passing through. So I stayed there just for three months, got a little bit of money behind me. And then I could, I could, um, uh start to think about things but yeah but as i was doing putting this coating this um plastic on coat hangers very very more very very boring if you like and um it gave me time to sit there and think and i couldn't go anywhere i couldn't run because i had to do this job eight hours a day and it was eight hours a day um yeah it was a very very, very interesting, very interesting experience. So, but that, then I decided to go and get educated and did, did, did all I wanted to do. And, I, and, you know, getting educated made no sense. Becoming a psychologist was an impossible dream. No way I was going to do that. But all of this was just, I was just following where spirit was taking me, where the spirit was. It's like as if there's something in me was programmed to say, mate, you've got to go this way. You've got to go this way. You, this is what you've got to do. And, and every time I went that way, Things worked well, and when, if I got off track of at track at all, it just didn't work. So I was just going along there, struggling, and to find the way to do it and to, to keep going. And you know, and, what was uh, the what was the th- what was the the, t- the point where you said I'm going I'm to go down this route and become a psychologist? What was that moment, or what what experience did you go through, or what was the light bulb moment? Like, how that happened? Oh, well, once again, I just fell into it. I was I went in the army as a national serviceman. So I went into the army, and uh, when I came out of the army, I thought oh, I'm going to go back. I'm going to go back to school because I'm supporting to go back to school. So I went in to go and to go to the army. And while while I was in there, I did a bit of correspondence studies and got a few subjects. And uh, then when I came out, I remember going and seeing this um, army counselor. He said, "Oh, yeah, okay. So you want to you want to go and study? So right, oh, we can give you, we can help you do this, this, and this." He said, "What do you want to study?" And I said, "Oh, I don't know. I think I might study, I might study teaching." And he said, "Well, why don't you do, why don't you do psychology? That goes well with teaching." And I said, "No, no, no way, no way can I do that? No way can I do that?" So I, I, I just turned around and I did primary school teaching. There I was doing a primary school teaching. I thought, look, I'll, I'll do a, I'll do a, I'll do a degree. I'll do a Bachelor of Arts. So I did a, because yeah, I wanted to get, I needed need a four-year qualification, I had a three-year qualification. So I did this Bachelor of Arts. And um, and then I thought, oh, I'm going to apply for study leave. So I got advice from somebody that said, look, don't bother. There's 10,000 applications, you won't get one. I thought, oh, okay, fair enough. So I put an application in anyway, got it, because I said I want to be a psychologist. I wanted to get, was going to study psychology because I'd heard on the grapevine that you get 
you got um, study leave for psychology. Well, the rest was history. Once I got into psychology, I, I couldn't I couldn't get out of it. I didn't when I say I couldn't get out of it. It just I, I suited it. It was just my. It was just just me. I just loved it. I loved the whole loved the whole lot, and I always have loved it. Then I started doing marriage guidance counselling, and uh, uh, while I was studying, I needed money, so I did marriage guidance counselling, and 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 uh, just to sort of learn what I was learn a bit more about that, and that was all pretty good as well. And then I end up as as a, as a psychologist in the education department, and then after that, I looked at myself, and by then it was about ten years after I first left home. I sat there and thought, oh, "My God, how did this happen?" How did this happen? How did how did I leave school at fourteen, work on the farm, dedicated to become a farmer for the rest of my life, and here I am, left the farm ten years later, I'm sitting here as a psychologist. It was it was just mind boggling how it how it even how it even even happened at all, but it did. And you can get the idea. I just fell into it. It just it just sort of was. It was it's each step was just fell into it. I never even knew what I was doing, but I just kept on falling into it. You know, and um, yeah, I've been very successful. I've loved it, but you know, um, I guess the, the 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 thing or the point I make is, unless you're doing what you really should be doing, it's going to be a struggle. See, so you, you know, I I see I see people. I see people like your Frank, like yourself, Frank, and and uh, you're sort of just you've just probably fall into what you're doing, and you're doing you know you're working in in the real estate industry, and and um, and good at it. Well, the real estate industry, I I couldn't do that. Not because it's wrong. I'd love to be able. I'd love to be able to do it because I love real estate. No, just I just couldn't do it. I just, just would just wouldn't work for me. But it works fine for you. And all of and uh, and um, I'm sure if I started doing it, I'd I'd do stupid things. And I'd sabotage it. And I'd I'd um, I'd blow it out of the water. And and uh, because every time I've tried something different than psychology, I end up by blowing it out of the water and having to come back to this and get back here, and I'm all nice and happy again. And it just feels right, and I feel at home. So I've, I've decided to give in now. I'm, I've stopped trying to do anything else different. Just going along like this and loving it. It just feels so good. It just all falls in place. Yeah, it's funny how it's, I, I guess I wasn't meant to do this. I didn't think about doing this when I was a kid or when I finished school. Or you know, you just I fell into it. Made a lot of mistakes through property. Was looking to change my life. There was a whole bunch of other things that came along with it. And look, I don't want to take up too much time to tell my story, but I guess a lot of people that do know me, you know, it just happened really. And I guess yeah. you're seeking, seeking and shall find, I guess is the, the, the old saying from King Solomon. But it's funny well, how things. Just a little bit about uh, to continue that, because I know you a little bit, but the most amazing thing you've got is your relationship with Adrian, um, you know, your, your, your business partner. That's, that to me is a really, really unique partnership. And once again, it's like it's a partnership made in heaven, you know. And you know, and you know, I know you've both got your it's your business partners and friends. That that's it. You know, you're not not suggesting you're gay or anything like that. But but um, but it's just it's the most amazing partnership, and it really it really seems to really really work. You know, so you're on the same path. I cut you off. I'm sorry. No, no. It's, yeah, it's uh, it's look. I'm very fortunate to have someone like Adrian. Of course, we've know each other since we were since we were kids i guess but mm. i think our relationship it's very different you know you always hear these stories when i was growing up you know I, I was a mechanic for many years worked with my uncle and hear the stories don't go in the partnership with friends or family and yada yada you all these things and i guess of course yes that i agree with, you know that but i agree as well if you don't if you're not aligned with your vision with what you're trying to achieve same like same outcome then of course going in the partnership with anyone, it's never going to work, really, is it? So I think we're very no. fortunate. We're, we're literally got the same interests, got the same goals, got the same, you know, literally everything is yeah. online, same vision with the company, same mission statement, you know. And so we're very fortunate like that. I think we're I think that what makes us unique is that we we communicate with things. If there's something wrong, I'll tell him that hey, age, I don't like what you've done here, you could have done better, or it's vice versa. You know, the other day he came up to me and he said, Hey, I don't like how you're not responding to, you know, your message right away and you're leaving it to the last minute with certain clients, blah, blah, blah. Can you pick it up? Okay, sweet. Let's do it. You know, I don't sit there and go, oh, you know, you did this or you do that. So I think the, I think what I think people do lack is probably emotional intelligence. And you probably see this a lot. I was going to touch on it next, but is that something that you see with, I guess, relationships, if it's business owners together, if not, you know, people in their spouse and they're together, 
and they're coming to you for you know the help with their their marriage is that something that you see and i know you talk about this cycle which we will touch on in a second i don't want to go off topic too much but of, of the stuck berries and there's this cycle that we go through as well but is that something that you see that happens consistently with i guess a lot of people that come to you yeah whether um i'll just make one comment before i go on to that question but with regard to the relationship that you and Frank, that you and um, Adrian have, that to me, because I see a lot of relationships, a lot of relationships, yours is very unique and very amazing. It's, it's, you know, and it's, um, I don't see many relationships which, which could do exactly what you said. They don't do it. They get all, all stuff. So, so there's something really special going on there. And, and, you know, you're actually meant to be doing this at this level together, but yeah, Relationships, as you, as I said back there, when I was training in psychology, I, I was also training, becoming a, med, a, a marriage guidance counselor, and I was accredited marriage guidance counselor. And uh, and in fact, in all in all the things I do, I doesn't matter what I do in psychology, I always end up back in relationship stuff. It's you know, and uh, what I found is the relationship stuff is probably the most difficult and badly badly um, handled um, part of psychology at all. It really is. I just, I don't know. There's just something about it. It's just what I can, I just seem to be able to have something. I can just do it. It just sort of works. And I'm able to work with people on, on their relationships. And it it does work. It doesn't matter what you do. And, you know, I, you know, I sort of look at, I see everybody is in a relationship with something. And that's the relationship which is going to, um, uh, which is going to get you through life or, or to take you down. But even when they're, you know, this is where, pe- they, where people go wrong in relationships. They look for the blame. They look for who's right and who's wrong. I've never yet seen anyone blamed into happiness. I've never seen anyone be wrong. Uh, I've never seen anyone make make their partner wrong and that to rely, to bring happiness about them into their relationship. I've never seen that. Uh, it just doesn't happen. But it's really hard to do because my parents, that's all they did. They blamed each other. And I'm sure yours did too. And I'm sure every and everybody's parents did. And and it is the most toxic model. It's it's the worst strategy, but the most popular one. And um and of course when you're blaming, we go back to what I said before that we blame so we stop listening because we're going to defend ourselves. I do not want to be wrong, so I'm gonna make you wrong. It just doesn't work and it's really, really hard. It's really, really hard to beat that model. But if you beat that model, just about any relationship can you know, will work, can work quite well. And um, and I also think that, you know, we've got a really high divorce rate, really high relationship breakdown. Um, and that's because they've got a lousy strategy. They have problems. Every relationship has problems, by the way. They have problems, but they break down. You and, you and um, Adrian, you have problems. You just told me but you have a really good strategy for doing it. He tells you and you say, oh, yeah, fine. He doesn't make you wrong. He just says, hey, I don't like this. Oh, good, okay. And you can do the same thing then. But you're not making each other wrong. Therefore, there's no blame. And away it goes. It just just keeps going. And each one of those little ones, little problems you get there, that could blow up into a really big deal breaker if it's not managed properly. Yeah, because, you know, like, and the longer you're with somebody, the more that's likely to happen. They say that in partnerships, I mean, in business, partnerships last about seven years. And seven years, they often stay together, but the partnership itself becomes unproductive and two people go their own separate ways. They may stay in the business together. They may, they may work in the same business, but they stop, they stop producing as a partnership and they, they, stop, um, they stop making each other more productive. And that, uh, that's about seven, that usually lasts about seven years. But if you get past that seven years, and you can look at that and uh, then, yeah, the relationship becomes extremely, extremely valuable and a very, very valuable thing. And, you know, if you have a look at anybody who's ever been successful, nobody but no one who is successful has done it themselves. They've all done it with, with a partner of some sort. They've all had help. And every one of them, and the, it's the relationships that take people through, whether it be marriage relationships, business relationships, or friendships, or whatever. It's those relationships that have to be really nurtured. And that's what I find so unique about, about your business is 
it's based on this really amazing relationship. And I reckon that relationship is the most valuable thing your business has because it's, it's the thing which is really working because I know both of you and with all due respect, I don't think either of you could run the business by yourself. I'll, I'll tell you that now you could, <laughs> but together you can, you, because you know, you, you both, you're both opposites, you know, you but you know, and with those opposites, they're also as prone to violence, prone to violence, prone to conflict. But if you don't go into conflict, then those opposites they really work work for each other, and that really really works. And that's what I've, I've that's what I see happening in in uh, in the few business relationships I see which are really functional. Not many of them, but the few of them are husband and wives in businesses. Now there's a good one. How often have I seen a business going broke? And the wife knows exactly what's going on and she knows exactly what's what's going on and she knows exactly what she should say but she says no it's his business i have no right to i have no right to say that and if she tries to say him he says this is my business you know don't worry you do your job i'll do mine no when they come together and work together that's when you get absolute gold absolute gold and uh yeah i love family businesses but most of a lot of my get to a certain point they can't go further because the couple stop working with each other they just work they work next to each other they work around each other but they don't actually work with each other and often it's often they work for each other or some of them work for the other person but not with not yeah you know, and that's that's what i realized way back there i'll go right back with annie when she started listening to me she wanted to work with me whoa i tell you what that was scary with the capital f really really scary because I wasn't used to that. I didn't know how to handle that at all. And I just had to learn because I intuitively knew she was spot on. So, How do you yeah. learn, Robert? How do you, you know, if, you, if someone's listening to this and they want to go into business with a partner or a friend or whatever it may be, what are the, some of the things you've got to learn or take responsibility on and to be able to have that good relationship if it's a business or professional relationship or if it's a, a marriage or, you know, with your partner? That's a that's a really uh, good question. Um, it's a it's a really really uh, simple answer because you know that I could I can answer that in about uh, two seconds. No, I can't. That's that's a very a very big one. I you know I could throw it back at you. I'm not going to that. But how did you learn? And you'll understand when I say it's just an inner feeling you've got. You know, I knew that I didn't know what the hell I was doing with Annie, but it felt right. So I. I did as much as I could and I learned as much as I could. And I'm glad I did because um, if I had have closed it down, suddenly it becomes just like my, just like what I saw my parents do. The man closes down the lady and the lady does all the work. And she, she knows what she's doing, but she's, she, gets, she gets closed down and away we go. So, um, but I think you've got to really and truly, you've got to acknowledge and you've got to respect your spirit, the absolute spirit that's within you. Um, and that's my guide because the answers I'm looking for are not up here. Up here doesn't have the answer. I can't know what's going. If I go up here, I start thinking. And if I start thinking, I go into blame. I go into make fault finding. I go into making people wrong. I do all that sort of stuff. So I've got to, got to go down into my into my spirit, if you like, into my spirit. Now, Your intuition. Sure. It, it's absolutely intuition. Yeah, but the intuition is the expression of it. Now, sure, you know, we talked about my little, the little model I use of, of um, you know, the cycle that every relationship has to go through. And that's, I've got that in my head. I know that one. But in implementing it, it's got to go down here. I've, I've got to actually come from down here and I've got to know just exactly where I'm going with it. And, um, uh, and you know, the, and here's a, here's a very interesting thing that cycle has told me because, you know, there's a, well, do you want to go? Do, do you want to go through that? I'll go through the cycle quickly. Because... Yeah, go for the stuff, Barry. So, people listening, if you are listening, probably put a visual up here on, on the YouTube channel. But there's a cycle that Robert speaks about. You could you talk about what's it called, Robert? The stuff berries. Yeah, there's um stuck stuck, but yeah, there's stuck berries are what you've got to deal with, and there's a cycle that goes around to bit to dealing with it. Um, yeah, you put a visual up, that'd be good, right? Up. The first thing is relationships all they all go a certain a certain way and so when you get into a relationship they start wonderfully 
everything great. Everything, you know, doesn't matter what they do. You just, especially if you're in, in love, you know. And I don't know if you've if you've done it, but the the I, lo- I call it the primal gazing, where you just, oh my god, it doesn't matter what the person does, it's just wonderful. You know, sex is wonderful, constant all the time, and you think, oh my gosh, if this can last forever, I'm going to have the most wonderful life, and you would have it, it never lasts. We know that, but it does last for a while and gets you bonded. And then the, then it gets you bonded and then some stuff starts coming up. And where people have a, make a mistake, they look at stuff because they say, I feel betrayed. You betrayed me. It's not like, a, you, not like it was. You've done this. It's, I'm only feeling like this when I'm around you. Rubbish. When, you're, when I'm around you, you are triggering me into feeling this stuff. But this stuff is with me. This stuff has come. I brought this into the relationship. You, you aren't causing me to feel this way. You might be triggering it. But it's in me, and so, and the other person saying, "Yep, it might be triggered." It's it's in me, and and so, you what's what you've got then? You've now got to deal with your difficulties, because you know you go for time. You decide, okay, I'm going to do it. You procrastinate for a while, but eventually, you're going to be facing your demons, and we've all got our demons. We've all got the we've all got these deep inner childish childhood things. Because I don't care how good your upbringing was, it wasn't perfect. I don't care how good your parents were, they stuffed up occasionally, they did the wrong thing, they missed out on things. And I don't, it doesn't matter how good and loving they were, there's things they did which you took exception to and it really triggered you. And, but because you're only a young child back then, less than seven years old. You don't have the intellectual capacity to deal with this stuff. So you just become emotional. And you're trying to think with your emotions. Well, emotions are not good at thinking. They never are, by the way. If you really want to really stuff your life up, take everything personally and think emotionally, those two things will really, really stuff you up. But so so all of a sudden, we're, we're stirring up the emotions. And when we stir up the emotions, we're stirring up the childhood stuff and um, had back, happened back there because... What we're doing is when we're kids, these things happen. We couldn't deal with them, so we stacked them away within our body somewhere. We put them away, and they and they just sit there. They sit there, and they just wait. And then all of a sudden, in my case, Mrs. P- Miss Perthy comes along. I go there. I get married. It's wonderful. Then all of a sudden, everything I don't want to feel comes up. Everything I don't want to feel. And some more stuff I didn't even know was there. And in fact... All the biggest problems I've got in my life are right, they're right there in her. She's bringing all of them up. Oh, my God. I know what I do. I need to get away from this lady. I'm going to leave. And, Run away. And people do. People leave. But the thing is, what happens is when they leave, they go out and get someone else and the same thing happens. Because for some unknown reason, it's a spiritual thing, you get attracted to these people and as soon as you start getting close to them, all your stuff comes up, not theirs. Doesn't matter who they are, your stuff's going to come up. So if you're going to, if your stuff comes up, you can't blame them. They can help you deal with your stuff, but I have to deal with my stuff, and I have to have the strategies to deal with my stuff. And that's what I've got to do. I've got to have a good strategy to deal with my stuck barriers, and and I've got to have. I need to have Annie help me, because one of the biggest things I had to deal with was dealing with my stuff in front of Annie. I didn't want Annie to see who I was. Now, that's what I had to deal with because that that come back from when I was a kid because, you know, um, you know, at my home, if if ever you expose yourself, emotionally expose yourself to somebody, you were absolutely put down because they were, that's just what happened. I hope I'm not. By the way, my family are lovely people. I'm not trying to <laughs> nail them. This is just, this is just my my stuff which i went through and, and i'm sure if they were telling me they, they'd tell you what a real what a real shit i was but that's okay that's another story uh, now this is my story so i was wonderful of course i was and it was all their fault because this is my story i'm not going to get the truth stuff up me a good story but um, most, most most people would say that wouldn't they they would always blame someone else they do they do they do and and it's a very popular thing to do for this reason because and the only reason is they don't have another strategy and so what I 
what I had to do with that, Annie, I had to learn how to listen to her. But it, and actually, it was the fact I wasn't listening to her. I had to listen to myself. And in listening to Annie, I, I couldn't listen to Annie unless I listened to myself. And as I listened to myself, so some, some thoughts come up, and I don't like them. I don't like some three thoughts I've got with myself. And I want to blame Annie for bringing them up in me. She's just a trigger, though. She hasn't. She hasn't. She's not coarse. She, she wasn't even there when this stuff happened. In fact, all the stuff had to do with I had it all in my all in my life before I ever met her. But and she's the same, yeah. Because you know, once you get the idea, she's perfect. Nah, she had to, she's got some stuff too. She had some stuff also. So we had to work really, really hard to deal with all this stuff, which we did, which 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 we've done, and it's you know, and it's pretty it's pretty good. Um, but at the same time, are we free of it now? No. Now I've got a bit of stuff. I've got some stuff there. Once again, it's all it's all Annie's fault. So you know, once 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 she takes once she takes the blame for it, I'll feel right. Not at all. I've got to be responsible for it, and that's hard because I'm so tempted to blame her. Because you know, that's a, as I said, it's a, and when you blame someone, you'll get relief for about two or three minutes, or maybe an hour. But at the end of the day, it's still there. I'm still saying, oh, my gosh. And I don't care what it is. I've got to take 100% responsibility for everything that happens in my life. Now, when I do that, what happens is, as I'm trying to deal with my stuck barriers, what happens is it gets worse. It feels, and I get to the stage where I, I'm i absolutely 100% sure there is no solution to this. No solution at all. And there's not in this mindset. Because what's actually happened is, I've now come to the end of this mindset. The mindset I'm in now cannot give me a solution. I, I can't see a solution from this mindset because there's not one. The solution is in the next mindset. And I, gotta, I have a choice right here. I either break down or I break through. If I break down, I go get divorced. Or I break down, I go in the argument. I break down, I go back to where I was. And we start arguing and doing all the rest of it and making each other wrong and, and feeling really sorry for ourselves. Or I break through and say, right, I'm going to break through and I'm just, and it's really hard. It takes only a few seconds to break through, but you've got to be willing to let go of all control and just allow yourself to move into the next phase in your life. We've all done this. We've all done this time and time again, but on the big ones and no one is going to cause you to break through bigger than what your partner, your, your the partner, the person you love most is. Ever notice that the person you love most is is the person you end up by, you can treat them worse than anybody else because, you know, um, and I, I've, I've, I've seen it, you know, um, you know, Annie and I, when we're really, when we're really going sometimes, nobody, nobody would hang around with us if we, if we said what we say to each other. And we wouldn't say to anybody else, we just say to each other. But then we break through and suddenly it's we're into a whole new way of thinking, which wasn't possible before. And suddenly all that was so important to us is just gone. We don't care. It just doesn't matter. And it doesn't matter. And suddenly there's, there's opportunities everywhere. We start looking and we start to see, my gosh, we can do this, we can do that. And it all it all sort of fits in and and people people start to get attracted. They want to they want to be around us because we're feeling so so really loving and you know we just we're full of the, this love stuff uh, and then we take on these opportunities and away we go again and the good relationship which Annie and I have is because when we ever have a problem we've got a strategy or a number of strategies quite a lot of strategies but we've got strategies that work and the with the people who have a relationship which don't don't work they've got a strategy which doesn't work and the strategy which doesn't work will be what I call below the line. They'll be blaming. They'll be they'll be um, finding fault with each other. They'll be um, justifying. They'll be in denial. They'll be all, and all that sort of stuff, all that negative stuff, which you can't, it just makes you more of a victim. Whereas if you can take responsibility, accountability, and um, ownership, which is the, the above the line stuff, it just works. But to do that, you've got to forget, the, you've got to forget all the negative stuff. And that's when you break through. And when you do that, you just break through. But if you focus on the negative, you won't, it'll hold you there. It'll hold you there so tight. It'll never let you go. It's quite it's quite interesting because there's a lot there. I was gonna I was gonna mention a few things. I guess with I've heard you say this before. When someone truly loves someone and they're going through, say, a divorce, 
yep. they will say some pretty horrific things, I guess. And I think you were saying something that a person that says all these things and hatred and all these things and, and these things that are hurtful, it's because they truly love that person, but they don't know how to express to, you know, to try and work out and have the strategies to, hang on a sec, I'm not, I should be saying the opposite to this to try and get back with that person, but instead I'm so mm. angry because it's all going to shit now. And I feel like, you know, the, you know, the house is on fire and I've got nothing left, but then they say the complete opposite and they start tearing that other person down and bringing everyone down around them. They do. They do. And I'm, I'm going to pull them down and on the way I'm going to make them wrong. So I'm going to blame and blame and blame. I'm going to make them wrong. And the lawyers love it because the more wrong you want to make someone, the richer the lawyer gets. They love it. The jab. What's interesting as well is like, there's a lot of people as well. They stay in a relationship, they fight, and and I, I say we've I say we, we all we all go through it, but we have an argument and we say things. But it's so funny that like we're still with that person. But if someone a stranger said something like that to me, you probably kick him in the in the face or you know hit him or something. Or, you know what I mean? You'll tell him to get effed. But we stay together. Do you look at that? I look at that as some sort of level of like a faith, or of course, or in in a, in a in a spirit that we're still together and connected. Is that how you kind of look at that? Because when I look at that, it's just interesting. You know what I mean? You you're in a relationship. You you're, you're fighting. You're going through all these all these things. Sometimes some people say bad things, of course, and then you're still with each other at the other end. But if someone else said that to you, like a stranger, or, oh, I don't know, a colleague, or whatever it may be, you're probably telling them where to go. Yes. Yeah. I. I. That's very true. Um. Because Annie and I can say some pretty horrible things, too. Because you know, I'm, see, I, I'm. I'm an expert. I'm an expert with relationships, and I can really, I can pick anyone's relationship except my own because you know the fish can't see water. So any and I, we're just just the same as everybody else. But um, uh, but 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 what sort of happens is that the unwritten rule is Annie's got permission to say that to me. She's got permission to be truthful, and when she really says something, it really really gets to me and really hits in. Oh my God! I know, I know. She's telling the truth. She's telling the truth. I don't want to hear. I do not want to hear what she said. I don't want. To. But she's pushing me to to do it. Boy, I tell you what. How could I possibly love this lady? But I do, I do. And it's like as if I've given the permission to do that. But if someone just comes and says something to me out of the blue, now they don't, they don't have the right, they have the permission. They don't know me. They don't even know me. If you really, it's when you listen to somebody. When you really listen to somebody and are really listening to them, you really got permission then to 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 say a few home truths, because you know they they sort of know you've honoured them with listening, and it is an honour to listen. So that, let's give you the home, the home truth is that um, yeah, this is what I see, and the other person says, well, you did listen to me, so you do know what I'm saying. So, but if all of a sudden you start to tell me something and you cut me off halfway through and and say, I think this, 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 and this. No, you don't have permission. You haven't listened to me yet. So it's sort of like, it's it's not not stated, but it is. We give people the, um, um, yeah, we give them permission to do that. They they have a right to do that to us, to say those things. And do you think I don't like giving people that right, by the way, but we do. Yes, go on. You, you know, once you've got these strategies, I guess, like yourself, for example, you know, you do this every single day, you understand, you see, you see relationships that don't work and you see, and you help them, you know, make them work. Okay. And, you yes. know, I've, I've experienced that with you. Do you see that there is such thing as a perfect relationship? You know, the perfect relationship where you don't fight anymore. You, you know how to handle these things or is that just, a, 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 I guess, a perception that we all believe that's like a fairy tale? Um that that it is a that is the fairy tale the happily ever after um but the perfect relationship is dealing with problem after problem after problem that's happiness you know it sounds sounds really oh, i've got problems yeah but we're going forward so each one of those problems is the key to our next to the next growth and development in our in our life and when we're getting that we feel pretty damn good we feel really good and the only time that we really have those arguments is when we get stuck we just get a little bit stuck. That's what the stuck berries are about, um, which I didn't quite didn't quite explain very well, did I? I just realised. But but we just get just get stuck on something, and and then we get stuck. We aren't going forward, and that starts to feel crappy. It starts to feel awful. So um, yeah, did I? I'm just 
having a senior moment there. I just lost I just lost the question there for a second. Uh, but yeah. Or a perfect relationship. A perfect relationship oh, where people yeah. that perfect relationship, yeah. you don't fight, you don't go through any, yeah. you know, trials and tribulations. You you just thank you. Don't. The ones yeah. I've seen like that, um, they they appear to be perfect on the outside, but they're going nowhere. If you're not fighting and dealing with things, you're going, you're actually going nowhere. Because it's it's not possible for a relationship to be together and there to be no difficulties. Now, on the business level, you and Adrian have pretty close to a perfect relationship, in my in my view, because you get problems and you deal with them. Now, you'll say, "Yeah, but we don't have, we don't have big fights. We don't do that." That's because you deal with them straight up. They don't have time to fester and grow and manifest and get huge. You deal with them then and there, bang, bang, bang. There's a pissy little problem that comes along. He says something, you, you say something back, good, dealt with, fine. End of story, and it hasn't grown. But in doing that, you've actually grown a little bit and you've, you know, you've you've gone really around that round that round that cycle, I told you, and you've dealt with a little, a little whatever it was, and bang, away it goes. So that's pretty close to the to that perfect relationship at that level. But and the intimate level with with, with a wife and family. Or a, you know, spouse and family. No, you're going to have some doozies. You're going to have some really, really big ones. And I've yet to see a relationship which has really solid and been there for a while, where the couples don't, won't say, "Well, we just about yeah, we come close to it. We we were going to call it there a while back, but anyway, we didn't." And um, and sometimes they they didn't bother because they decided no, not going to go there, and they pulled out of the relationship, they stayed together and they didn't go anywhere and they they live unhappily ever after, actually. Whereas you get other ones who have decided to stay there because they they decide, nope, I'm going to work with them. I'm going to work with this. Nope, I want to stay with you. This is what I'm thinking. You tell me what you're thinking. And they start listening and dealing with it. And then they, they grow and develop all their life, doing very similar to what you've done, in fact. And that is whenever a problem comes up, they deal with it straight away because they've now got themselves a strategy for dealing with it. It's all about the strategies. See, I think divorce should be about 10%. I think the 50% divorce, this is you know, a bit ridiculous. You know, it's pretty interesting because I've got the stats here. You know, the medium age for women getting divorced is 43 and for men it's 45. So that's okay. the average. That, that, that's the medium age of these people, you know, you know, men and women getting divorced at that age. And mm. it's pretty, it's pretty, it's pretty sad. And I guess, when we look at it, I guess the older look. I'm th I'm 30, 31, so it's a, the the next. It's a generation before me, um, and so where do you think that's? Do you think that's a, a society thing? That's you know, technology's had a big part of that. You know, we see a lot of things online. You go on social media, you see these, you see all these people posting these things, and you got all this, you know, influencers and and these people projecting all these. You know, this is a happy life, happy relationship, this perfect world that you may see. And people get driven or drawn toward to that, and they think that's what you know a perfect relationship is, or that's what success is, or that's how I need to look. Do you think that's had a big part to this divorce and and people, you know, getting divorced so so with such a high rate, or do you think it's other things as well that have just had an impact on society? I think what you're saying there has a uh, that's a really really big big part of it because with all the technology, people are looking. You know, technology, the first thing does takes you into your head. Well, all these relationships, none of these relationships make logical sense, you know. They're all illogical. Because as you said, you know, why would I want to be, why would I want to stay with someone who's going to say the worst things in the world to me? Why not just bail out, damn that? I'll go and find someone who's going to speak nice to me and find someone. So, so you know, uh, so that, and that's that's what technology does. And then, of course, technology is, you know, you look at all the celebrity things and it says you shouldn't even have, have a fight. As soon as a celebrity has a fight, if anyone who kept, um, gets them while they start saying, are they, are they stay still together? Are they going to get divorced? They're not supposed to have fights. So, so there's a really, um, really crappy view of what a good relationship um, should and should and shouldn't be. Um, but having said all that, we're also at midlife crisis. Yeah, 40, 40, 40, 45, 43, 45, or 35 to 45 is midlife crisis and sometimes it comes earlier. And, and of course, by then, you got married, and a lot of people have got married, had kids. Kids are now te teenagers, and you sit there and say, "Well, what, what now? Where am I going to go now?" The kids are just about gone to go. It's about got to go, and um, 
what's what's the use? And hang on, do I want to live the rest of my life with with that? The kids are gone, and we don't even talk. We haven't talked properly for ten years. And he's sitting there, and he's going to work, and she's going to work, and they come home, and you know, and nothing sort of happens. They because you know they spend all the time at work, and they and they're doing all talk with other people, and they've got two almost independent lives now. And they say, what, what do I want to stay together with that for? Um, and yeah, as I said, the, and there's the, the midlife, the midlife crisis. What is there more to this? We've actually come to a spot in our life where we've got a, a really big stuck period are going to come up because the really big stuck period is, like, okay, um, you don't even know where you've got to go now. And are you willing to work together to work out where to go, where to take this life? A lot of people get up there and they go, they go traveling. Well, that's fine. But I don't know, but if you're not getting on with your partner, it's not going to be a nice travel. Can't be, you're not going to be traveling very nice, stuck in a car or stuck in a plane or stuck together and stuck in a hotel room. Um, you know, you've, you've really got to sort of get it together and start to start to um, help each other grow and develop and deal with your stuff. Now, I don't mean what people do is they say, well, let's, let's get on. Let's be happy. Let's not fight. No. Let's deal with our stuff. Let's deal with the stuff. Because when we travel and when we're doing this stuff, the stuff's going to come up because travel's hard sometimes. It doesn't always go well. And it's not just travel. It's, you know, it can be other businesses. It can be other whatever you want to do. But whatever it is, you're going to still have to work together. You've got to work together on yourselves. And if working together on yourselves is, is, um, is, is difficult to do, well, that just means you haven't got a good strategy. But midlife crisis... Yeah, comes. They say it comes earlier now because of a lot of because of the the, the pace of stuff. There. But um, yeah, uh, and yeah, the famous midlife crisis. The male gets the midlife crisis. Next, next you know, he's a, he's a forty five year old male. And he goes and finds himself a twenty five year old lady to go to go ahead and do things with, you know. And uh, then they go ahead and they have another family if you like. You know, that to me is um, it's not necessarily a bad thing, but often it's not dealing with the real issue there at the same time because um yeah the most challenging person i've ever had in my life is my wife which i've been with for 33 years now and it's has it been bliss yeah it's been pretty good but bliss is bliss is not a word i'd i I'd, I'd want to describe it as but i'm very happy only because i've we've we've yeah you know, see i what i'm talking about i'm i, pr I practice what i preach i do practice what i preach and uh, it, I, it all gets down to listening. I have to make myself listen. If things are going wrong, I've got to make myself listen. And then things magically start to come right. You know what's interesting, Robert, is that, you know, you see you got people that are becoming psychologists and they've been or maybe been a psychologist for many years, but they haven't gone, haven't, they haven't dealt with their their issues or they haven't, you know, gone through these problems, or well, they probably have gone through the problem, but they haven't dealt with the problems. And so a lot of people actually don't practice what they preach, which is actually quite scary. For me, when I was, you know, looking, when I look for people, when I want to go to a certain professional, get help or whatever it may be, I want to go to the people that experience it. I don't care about the degree. I don't care, you know, how smart they are. To me, that's all BS. I don't want to go through someone's gone through the trials and tribulations. Like my, my, my coach, my business coach that we work with, of course, he's gone through it. He's done what we've done. He's built the biggest buyer's agency. I wanted to go straight to him. I didn't want to go to someone that's just, you know, hasn't experienced that. I guess that there is, is, I think, is probably one of the most valuable things that people can actually look at when they're going to get advice or going to get help or whatever it may be. Is that something that you see a lot of people that will come to you and they've gone through multiple psychologists or try to go down a certain road and it hasn't worked out because of you know so much stuff out there and what's going on and what society you know uh what's the word project on everyone yep yep because um yeah it's the most disappointing thing for me that psychologists don't have to do their own personal development that should i think they should it should be a part of part and parcel of the of the whole program and they should really have to have to experience it because in my opinion though they they can't take no one can take you past where they're at so if someone hasn't done their work they can't take you into that work like they, they can't take you past where they're at so if they're stuck somewhere good you're not going to get part you know they're not going to get past there i've seen so a lot of um a lot of marriages really really destroyed by terrible terrible counseling 
I've seen some good stuff too, by the way. Yeah, there, there are some good ones out there. Um, but anyone that's just, that's just done the, in my opinion, anyone that's just done the academic traditional psychology and nothing more, I, I'm not going to go there. But I do know quite a few psychologists that have done the traditional stuff and they've also done their own personal development. They've become shamans. They've done this and done that. And they're pretty good, you know. And, and I... I've gone off, you know, I've gone and, and worked with some of them and worked alongside them and even even been counselled by them. And I'm shocked at how at how much uh, insight they've got and pleased. I'm pleased too because, you know, the stuff they do, it's really interesting. When someone gets me, I, I sit there and think, oh, why couldn't I see that? Of course, you're spot on. Why couldn't I see it? It seems so obvious when someone says it to you. But, you, you know... As I said, you can't see it because the fish can't see water. I can't see the soup I'm in. See everybody else's water, but not my own. And uh, yeah, and yeah, I often joke with people. I say, yeah, look, you know, when my wife and I we have a fight, you know, I found one of the one of the statements I make, which is very significant. I say, oh, listen, listen, just be quiet. I'm the psychologist. I'm the marriage guidance expert. I know what I'm talking about. You don't. And I said, yeah, yeah, that that really that really works well. <laughs> Of course it doesn't. <laughs> it's just the last thing that can, that can possibly work. So, you know, you, you've, you've got to be real about it. You've got to be real about it. And I'm I'm disappointed that psychology hasn't gone that way, but it hasn't. It has. It's, it's stuck with the academic. They try to keep it science. I've got no problems with that, but add a bit of spirit to it too. Mm -hmm. So Jung, probably the best, one of the fathers of, of psychology, he was really, really spiritual himself. And, uh, but, you know, but since then, they people have grabbed hold of Jung over, a lot of people have taken the academics have taken the spirit out of it because they try and they try and make it logical. Well, it ain't logical. Spirit's a whole different logic. It's just not a logic you can work with up here. If you try and if you try and work out your problems from up here logically, you said this, therefore I should say this, and da da da. You're going nowhere because that's not how it works. It's as illogical as all hell. As I said, you know. Um, you say one thing to me, and I tell you to go and get go and get stuffed, and I walk out. Um, logically, that's the end of the relationship, but spiritually, no, that's that's the start of a good process for me. <laughs> it can be the start of some really good conversation because we come back and say, okay, now what were you trying to, and away we go. It's, that's, it's not going to make logical sense, and don't try and make a logical sense out of it. Um, yeah, so that's that's yeah, so yeah, I, I, I do agree. But as I said, there are some, because there are a lot out there. There's quite a few people out there who've done work on themselves. Them are fine. But anyone who hasn't done work? No, I'm not interested. I'm not interested in being part of it. Well, it's been a great, a great, a great podcast, Robert. And I guess lastly, I want to kind of ask you a question. What, what do you define as success? Oh, I believe these ones last, huh? For me, I define what I define as success is to be dealing with problem after problem after problem. And and that is success. And I also find that's happiness because when I'm dealing with problems, I'm going forward and I love it. Failure is being stuck to mm -hmm. me. It's just being stuck. Failure is when you're going nowhere and you're, and you're just absolutely stuck where you're going. So so somebody somebody could be making a million dollars a year and in my sense they could be failing. Somebody can be really struggling along at... Um, uh, ten thousand dollars a year, and they can be succeeding because they're dealing with stuff and going and going through it. See, I I always you know people say love your problems, yeah, love your problems, use them, use your problems, use your problems to to um um to succeed. Love if it. you're not dealing with problems, there's, a, there's, a quote, there's, a, there's a quote that you always say to me. The you know the who, who's the man or the man who do you have to be? What's a, always always oh, I get to jump okay. up? Yes, okay, and it, it's it's very good one that whenever you get a, a problem, you ask yourself the question: Who do I have to be so this ceases to matter? That will take you into where you got to go, and you'll you'll do it. Who do you have to be so it ceases to matter? And it means you're not asking the problem to change. You're not asking, even asking the problem to go away. You ask it so that you change. So it it's doesn't matter and uh yeah but all these things are very challenging when you've got this when you've got a partner who's not agreeing with you and they're you know, and you're absolutely sure they're wrong who do i got to be so it ceases the matter and the worst part is they're usually damn right <laughs> that's my problem <laughs> she's usually right well i love it robert i think a lot of people would have got value from this 
how would people find you? What's the best way to get a hold of you if they are interested in having a chat, having a discussion? They might be going through some relationship issues or maybe some business issues. Yes, um, it's really it's really hard to know because I'm I'm in I'm in between websites. Um, they, they can they can email me at um, robert.hillier at gmail or um, the other thing they can they can call me and maybe maybe you want to put my phone number on there and people can call if they wish. Yeah, definitely, yeah, definitely. Yeah, because I was, quite, as I said, I was going to say it's quite funny because your 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 kind of business is all word of mouth referrals. Absolutely, and. I just think people find me who need to find me, and they do. Yeah, but um, I, yeah, I, I just, I don't want, I don't want to, I don't go out and market. I don't try and get people to come. It's like as, it's like as if, hey, it's just like as if the spirit in them sends them to me. Fine, okay, and we just sort of hit it off really well. But if it's not meant to be there, and I'm starting to work with it. It just, it's just not going to work. It just doesn't mm-hmm. work, you know. So because you, oh, you've got to be ready to look at yourself. Go on. Definitely, yeah. definitely, and I'll put I'll put the your number and email in the comments. And if people yep. are interested, reach out, or if you want to reach out to me, I can pass that on to you as well. But I've had the experience, the pleasure to work with you, and I've had tremendous success, success uh, from that. So I always want to get people on that I've experienced some positive things I've had in mm-hmm. my life. So once again, thank you again for making the time, and I guess thank you for everything as well. Oh, thank you for saying so, and. Uh... And that's 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 what I do it for. So, so people can really benefit and get get their life going forward. It feels good to me. So thank you. It's good. Thank you for saying so. Welcome. Okay, and uh, thanks thanks for having me on.